Hey guys, I am here again with Cheryl, who I'm sure you guys all know very well by now, but in case you don't, we are both expats in Paris and I'm American and she's British. And somehow, even after living a year in the UK, I've still managed to never do a video that's comparing British versus American things. So that's what we're gonna do today. We have compiled a few stereotypes that are quite typical of Americans or British people. And just a tiny little disclaimer, we didn't make up these stereotypes. These are stereotypes that exist and people say, and what we're gonna do is just kind of discuss in our experience if we think the stereotype has any merit whatsoever. Yeah, I think that's fair. It doesn't take a lot of Googling to find these stereotypes. Yeah. So. <laughs> They're pretty standard. And I would love you guys to leave your own experience in the comments below. It's like both big countries have lots of different parts, so obviously mm -hmm. some stereotypes might apply in some parts of right. the countries and not in others. So let's start, we're gonna do three and three, so let's start with one British stereotype that we have heard. <laughs> so one stereotype is that British people have terrible food. So what do we think about this one? I actually have to say I think it's true. <laughs> what even is British food, really? Mm. Like pies, fish and chips, like Bangers and mash. Yeah, like we don't have anything that's like refined or... Yeah, it's all very much like comfort food. Yeah. Which actually reminds me a lot of like Midwestern types of stuff. I don't think it's terrible, but it definitely, mm -hmm. it's not refined. Like it's like the meat and two veg kind of diet, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, I don't think we can ever really be that proud of our cuisine, <laughs> you know? There were ciders and things like that that I really mm -hmm. wanted to try, but yeah. nothing, well, fish and chips I wanted to try, but it's not necessarily because you think it's gonna be great. It's just one of those things mm -hmm. you want to experience because yeah. it's typical. All right, so let's grab an American one now. A very common one is that we dress sloppily. Sloppily. Yes. So we don't dress very well. From my perspective, I would have to agree with that um, for the most part. I don't necessarily think it's always sloppiness, mm -hmm. although you do have a, like a high percentage of sweatpants goers in the, yeah. in the like Walmart sort of area. Yeah. <laughs> I've been one of those, I'm not judging. There's maybe like a difference of the threshold of what's acceptable to wear right. outside. Yeah, so like here in Paris, if you wear flip-flops, Depending on what type of flip-flop you're wearing, but if you're wearing like the typical rubbery flip-flops, you're gonna get some, probably some weird looks. I know this because I've done it before. Yeah, like, <laughs> are you going to the beach? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like, there's a time and a place for mm. those. T-shirts and stuff are extremely common, and when I say t-shirt, I don't mean like styled t-shirt with like, you know, text on it or something, but like just good old, they gave me this for free when I went to this camp type of t-shirt. <laughs> and that's totally normal and acceptable in a lot of like just casual environments in the US. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much in other places. So it's not necessarily sloppy. It's that, a little sloppy. <laughs> is that a city thing though? Again, like, I feel mm. if you went to New York, maybe you wouldn't see so much of that. Yeah. I feel like the UK is a little bit in the middle because, mm -hmm. like, no one would really look twice if you were to wear, you know, sweatpants mm -hmm. <laughs> outside, but it wouldn't be something that you'd be able to do a lot. It's just yeah. like, you know, if you're running to get a pint of milk or right. something like that, it would be fine, but you wouldn't necessarily go to a place that's like super public. I have seen people legitimately in PJs too, like it's not even mm -hmm. sweatpants, but that's a little bit taboo. <laughs> in the UK, you definitely get that in like student yeah. places, you mm -hmm. know. It's not just Americans, but mm -hmm. definitely if you compare it to a lot of other countries, mm -hmm. it's very distinctly casual, I will yeah. say. So yeah, I would say that's probably mostly true. Okay, so how about another British one? So this one's kind of a contradictory one because growing up, I always heard the stereotype that British people are rude. But there's also sort of this counter stereotype that I think is more common outside of North America that is British people are extremely nice and apologize for everything. <laughs> so let's get your perspective first on this one. Wow, okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not about to say that I'm really, really nice, but um, I don't know, I think it depends where in the UK you're from because I had this as like a reverse culture shock about a week ago um, when I went to London and I was just shocked by how rude people were but when I went down to visit my mum who lives in like a little sleepy fishing village it's the kind of place where you go outside of your front door and people are like walking their dogs outside like oh good morning, mm -hmm. how are you, kind of thing so I don't know, I think it's really, it depends on like the city versus countryside thing yeah. a little bit and uh, where you are in the world like I think northern Brits like northern English people are more friendly perhaps mm -hmm. I've heard that as well. In my experience, I lived in Bristol for a year and I was sort of like bracing myself for the stereotype of British people being rude, but I think the more I kind of experienced it, the more I kind of realized it was more of a general 
coldness slash awkwardness yeah, with strangers. I can understand. And that. in the U.S., it's extremely common to like I don't know have a conversation with your cashier or something. <laughs> That's not uncommon. And I felt like in England, it was just kind of taboo to strike up a conversation with a stranger. You just don't do that. There's sort of this barrier you don't cross. Yeah, I think that kind of ties into what I said because mm -hmm. there was a lady when I went to visit my mom who said hello to me when she was just walking her dog, and it was all very lovely. But in like anywhere that's any bigger than like a sleepy village, people will be like, why are you talking to me? Like, are you trying to rob me? <laughs> Do you have some kind of like hidden agenda? Like I think mm. British people can be quite suspicious yeah. of that kind of behavior. So yeah, maybe that is true. That kind of ties into the next one we're gonna talk about for the American stereotype, which is that we are fake friendly. When I say fake friendly, I don't wanna offend anybody because I don't think it's necessarily trying to be fake or trying to be superficial. Mm -hmm. It's just literally you kind of, you act extra friendly around strangers. You don't want to like bring them down with your problems a lot of times. So you smile and you say hello. And like here in Paris, if I smile at somebody, I've gotten some really weird looks. <laughs> I don't know if they think I'm trying to flirt or trying to like rob them or what it is. <laughs> but I, yeah. like, it's just not super acceptable to be that mm -hmm. friendly. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's not, I'm not trying to be fake. I'm just being friendly, but I could be it's in a bad mood and smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a behavior that you've learned. But not everybody does. And especially like if you compare it with cities like New York, for example, but definitely in the Midwest. All right, so the third British stereotype is that <laughs> They can't drink, but they love to. <laughs> That's exactly how I wrote yeah. it. So I've definitely heard this before, like, mm -hmm. and I've had it, especially when I was here in Paris. People are like, oh, you must drink a lot kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm like, I can. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it's necessary because we are a nation of binge drinkers in the, in the UK. We're more likely to drink a lot in one go, like on a weekend, for example, than here in Paris where they'll have like a glass of wine mm -hmm. multiple nights a week. But so they, maybe they, I've, I've heard that they drink more in France, but it's more like spread across the week rather than us <laughs> all at once. Bring, like binge drinking on Saturday night kind of thing. Whether or not we can handle our drink, I think it's, it's true, but I think it's more based on a uh, culture of binge drinking and drinking yeah. more in one go. And you also mentioned when we talked about this before, the sort of football, soccer yeah. <laughs> culture as well mm -hmm. that a lot of people get outside of the UK, especially in Europe, because when there are events all across Europe or all across the mm -hmm. world and large groups of British people show up to yep. cheer on their team. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like in their football soccer mood. Yeah. yeah, so of so, course they're gonna like binge drink and be sloppy yeah. drunks and not hold their mm -hmm. drink and stuff, but that doesn't necessarily reflect for yeah, the entire Yeah, that's country. like one certain type of breed of people. Yeah, and one so, certain event type yeah. as well. Because so. uh, a lot of people will go to their local pub and watch football and mm -hmm. drink, you know, it's like a perfect man cave environment for getting mm -hmm. drunk. And the last one for American stereotypes is that we have a very bad diet. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's kind of difficult because you have kind of two very well-known aspects of American food culture, and that's the junk food that most of the world, unfortunately, has been very exposed to, the McDonald's. And then you've kind of actually got the wave of like organic, vegan, vegetarian, trendy types of foods that are very popular, especially in cities. Unhealthy diets are definitely a big part of American culture, and it's definitely a problem, but I, I'm not sure it's necessarily that much worse than other countries. We just did a video, which I'll link to, but trying a bunch of British junk food and awful, we, awful stuff. Yeah. Things and that it should not be consumed by human beings. Really. <laughs> Some of it was quite tasty, but it was all like really junky junk food. And that's not any worse than what we eat in the US. Well, well, maybe the quantities are different, or at least it yeah. was when I was growing up. I don't know about now. Depends where you are, depends yeah. what you're eating, depends what your personal family values are. Because mm -hmm. you have probably in America the same kind of foods that we have here in the UK or in Europe, but there's more of a culture towards the junk, but you right. can quite as easily not, you know, follow the marketing and the, that kind of thing. So yeah, um, if you agreed or disagree with any of these, or if you have any other stereotypes to add, definitely leave those in the comments below. But be nice, come on. <laughs> yes, please be nice. No trolls allowed, please. <laughs> this is not insulting any culture. It's literally just talking about stuff Observing that we've noticed. Observing differences. Mm -hmm, exactly. We also did a video over on Cheryl's channel a little bit ago where I tried some British junk food, which I mentioned earlier in the video, but you definitely should check that out. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And definitely subscribe to Cheryl as well. She has a lot of really cool, like, culture shock and culture, like, perspective videos. Thank you guys all so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon.